Basketball fans, welcome into NBA Now from Chat Sports. I'm your host, Jimmy Crowther, and today I'm breaking down all the latest news and rumors going around the association. Most of what we're talking about today is going to be dealing with some injuries of the big-time NBA players for when the season returns, starting out with LaMarcus Aldridge of the San Antonio Spurs. Now, the Spurs announced that he underwent right shoulder surgery back in April, and it's going to cause him to miss the remainder of the 2019-2020 season. So, whenever basketball comes back in July, unfortunately for the Spurs, LaMarcus Aldridge will not be with the team. Now, the Spurs are in the hunt for the eighth seed in the Western Conference. They're not there yet. They're one of the teams that is going to come back and look to get catch up and make some ground up in the Western Conference when, the, when basketball is back and try to catch up to the Memphis Grizzlies. But now without low Marcus Aldridge, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Aldridge was really impressive this year for the San Antonio Spurs, even at 34 years old. He put up 19 points per game, seven and a half rebounds, nearly two and a half assists, and was really, really efficient as well. A little under 50%. He tried to extend his range some. He could shoot the three a little bit better this season. But that mid-range game and his back to the basket game is where he finds his bread and butter. So again, Spurs, now without LaMarcus Aldridge, going to be battling for the eighth seed, and it's looking even more tough when you don't have a guy who's putting up 19 points per game. The Memphis Grizzlies have the eighth seed right now, and they're sitting at 32 and 33 on the season, followed closely behind with the Portland Trailblazers and the New Orleans Pelicans. Those are the three teams that I think, when it's all said and done after these first eight games, those are the three teams that are going to be in the hunt truly for the eighth seed. Now, after that, you've got the next tier. It's the Sacramento Kings. There you have it, the San Antonio Spurs and the Phoenix Suns. I believe the Spurs, the Suns, and the Kings are all too far behind the Pelicans, the Trailblazers, and the Grizzlies to really make up enough ground to be competitive for that eight seed. Another thing that really hurts the Spurs is what their starting five looks like right now. It's not that impressive. DeJounte Murray is a great guard, but he is still not fully recovered from that torn ACL. I think he still has a little bit of progress to be made. And then Bryn Forbes is also in the backcourt. A good shooter, but not a guy you want starting in the playoffs. Now, DeMar DeRozan, a great player. Still putting up 22 points per game. Still scoring really efficiently at the mid-range and getting to the rim. But then your big men, now that Aldridge is out, it's pretty soft. Jakob Pertl and Trey Lyles are not going to get it done in the Western Conference, and it's not going to net you the eighth seed in the Western Conference. So I want to know from you guys, who do you think will be the team to snag that last seed in the West and be the last team in the playoffs? Like I said, you've got the Grizzlies, you've got the Trailblazers, you've got the Pelicans, and then after that, you got the Suns, the Kings, and the Spurs. Personally, I'd like to see the Pelicans get that eighth seed. I'd love to see Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, and Lonzo Ball going at it in the playoffs, but... The Grizzlies are looking pretty strong as well, but let me know who you guys think should get it in the in the eight seed in the comment section down below. Now, NBA fans, basketball is coming back, but the most important thing right now is that you are staying healthy. And today's show is brought to you by Fanatics that are trying to keep you safe, healthy, and stylish with some of these NBA masks. When you go to chatsports.com slash NBA mask, you can get a three pack of these face masks for just $24.99. Whoever your favorite team is, go pick yourself up one at Fanatics. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay stylish. Thanks to Fanatics today. Now, another guy I want to talk about, this isn't an injured, this is an injured player right now, but he might be getting a little bit more healthy, is Andre Roberson of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, this guy has not played basketball since January of 2018. He had a gruesome knee injury. He was out for the season, and then he missed all of the 2018-2019 season as well. So it has been a little over two years since this guy has played basketball. Now, he has been rehabbing in Los Angeles, but right before the pandemic hit, he got back to Oklahoma City and started rehabbing with the team. Now, Sam Presti, one of the best GMs in the game today, said this about Andre Roberson in this time off. So the time has really helped Dre. From a health standpoint, he's doing really well. The issues that we're facing is that we haven't had the opportunity to see him on the court in real basketball activity because everything is still relegated to the one-on-one -on -one, or one-on-zero still. So Roberson's healthy, he's playing basketball again, but he hasn't gotten to go in any, any five on five drills. So the Thunder don't know just how healthy this guy really is. Now back in 2017, 18, his last really half healthy season, I guess I should say, okay, he's putting up five points per game and five rebounds and 1.2 steals. Now three point percentage, absolutely abysmal at 22%. He's a good athlete, he can finish around the rim, but this guy, what he does, it doesn't show up in the box score. He is a defensive stalwart. He is going to guard the best player on the perimeter, and that would really help this Oklahoma City team right now. Not to mention he's also a bit of a veteran, and really 
Oklahoma City's wings are super, super young. They've got a lot of depth, but a lot of young depth. Shea Gilgis Alexander is one of my favorite players to watch right now at 19.3 points per game. Lugans Door is on a two way contract and he is starting for this Thunder team. He is a great pickup, was a great undrafted player that the Thunder went out and signed, and he has been incredible. Basically, the new Andre Roberson in Oklahoma City. Hamadou Diallo, some nights he looks great, some nights he's pretty ugly. Darius Baisley is a good young player, but he hasn't really proven himself quite yet. So the Thunder are still good. They've also got Terrence Ferguson, who is a great athlete, but he's not consistent. So you got Dort, you got Shea Gilgis that you can get some consistency out of, but the Thunder still need one more guy like an Andre Roberson. And if they get him, I think they could go pretty far in the playoffs. I think they could get past that first round, but it might still be tough for them. So how far will CP3 and SGA and Danilo Gallinari and Steven Adams take the Oklahoma City Thunder this year in the playoffs? Let me know in the comment section below how far you think they're going to go. Now, before I get to my last little piece of news, piece of rumors with the NBA, I want to remind you about Fanatics because I don't want you to miss this deal because we care about our watchers' safety. We care about their health. So when you go to chatsports.com slash NBA mask, you're going to get this three-pack of NBA face masks. Any NBA team you want, share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Go pick up some for just $24.99. I'm a big fan of what Fanatics is doing here for NBA fans because – we all want to rep our favorite team, and we also want to stay safe and healthy at the same time. So that's how you're going to do it. Chatsports.com slash NBA mask. Now, if you're a fan of the Brooklyn Nets, maybe you're getting some Brooklyn Nets face masks. You're a little upset right now because your two star players are not coming back. Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant have officially been ruled out for the rest of the season. Now, we all kind of expected Kevin Durant, who tore his Achilles in the NBA finals, to miss the rest of the season. But... Brooklyn and Durant both confirmed it. Now, Kyrie had a few injuries with the Nets this past season. He only played in 20 games, but people were like, hey, he might still come back, but that was not the case. So now Brooklyn is without these two absolute studs. Now, KD, back when he was healthy last season, was putting up 26 points per game, 6.4 rebounds, nearly six assists, and doing it all really efficiently at 52% from the field. Kyrie this season, again, this is only 20 games, a pretty small sample size, but he has still been really solid for Brooklyn at 27.4 points per game, little over five boards, little over six assists. And again, he's been pretty efficient too in those 20 games at 48% and nearly 40% from three. So you're missing Kyrie Irving. Who is going to step up big for the Brooklyn Nets now? That is the big question. Their depth right now is... It's a little bit of a toss-up when you look at guys that can replace Kyrie. Spencer Dinwiddie, probably the best backup point guard in the NBA because he's basically been a starter this year at 20.6 points per game. Spencer Dinwiddie is absolutely incredible. He's going to get paid here pretty soon. But then after that, your next point guard on the roster is Chris Chioza, a guy who's with the Houston Rockets and then with the Washington Wizards as well. He's putting up four points per game. He is barely playing for Brooklyn. Now, Karis LeVert and John Musa, two guys I like a lot, LeVert, Obviously a great player, even though he's had his fair share of injuries. And then John Musa has not been really playing all that much this year for the Brooklyn Nets. But overall, this guard lineup is a bit in question because you got Dinwiddie and you got Chioza. The other two guys are going to have to play the other guard position. So what is Brooklyn going to look like? Well, if you look at their starting five right here. You get Dinwiddie and you get Karis LeVert in the backcourt. I think that's really solid. In fact, I think it's a better backcourt than most Eastern Conference teams right now. But then you get Joe Harris. Sure, he's good. He's a great shooter, absolutely. But three ball is all he does. He does not play any defense. Meanwhile, Wilson Chandler is your starting power forward, a guy who was suspended at the beginning of the season's come in. Been pretty good, a good veteran presence for the Nets. But then DeAndre Jordan in the middle. I don't agree with Jordan starting. I think it should be Jared Allen. But let's face it, this starting lineup for the Brooklyn Nets is not very strong. And that's a problem because there's still a chance they get knocked out of the Eastern Conference playoffs. Milwaukee's at number one. Nobody's even going to touch Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Milwaukee Bucks. You got the Raptors at two, a, a surprise in my opinion, followed by the Boston Celtics and Miami Heat. That's your top four. Brooklyn's not getting into that top four. But then five through nine, that's where things get a little bit interesting for the Eastern Conference. Indiana Pacers, Philadelphia 76ers, neck and neck at five and six. But seven, eight, nine, wide open. The Brooklyn Nets, 30 and 34, almost tied with the Orlando Magic at 30 and 35. And the Washington Wizards are going to get a chance to compete for that final playoff spot at 24 and 40. And oh, let's not forget, John Wall could be back 
for the Washington Wizards, making that team a little bit more interesting. And if Brooklyn doesn't figure it out without Kyrie and KD, they could very well miss the playoffs in, in the Eastern Conference. So, you know, it's going to be tough. Washington's got to do a lot of things. John Wall's got to look really good. Bradley Beal's got to win a lot of games for Washington. But there's a chance the Nets fall off. So which team in the Eastern Conference is going to miss the playoffs? It's probably between Brooklyn, Orlando, and Washington. I know I'd like to see Washington in the playoffs over a Brooklyn Nets team without KD and Kyrie, but if you've got another team, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.